Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Trigger. In the last part we found ourselves here in 2300 AD, which by the way, if you stand still on the world map, you can see that we're in that time period now. And now we're in this little lab with our new friend Robo. Fun fact, if you do have Robo um, in your party, if you ever like reach a new time zone, when it normally will show the question mark in text, it'll actually show it because Robo knows what time it is. I'm assuming just due to the fact he has so many records in him. Though I think there's one timeline that that might not work with, but I'm not entirely sure, because honestly, Robo's a constant in my party, because he's just really useful. This section right here sucks because you can't touch these robots. If you do, you get dragged up onto the conveyor belt at the top of the screen, and then you have to go through a good amount of battles in a row, which I, I want to do eventually, but I do want to run along the conveyor belt for a bit, because there are chests along it. In all, in all honesty, some of the battles actually I find quite difficult. Uh, the thing is, the battles I'm thinking of that are up there is that it's a lot of marathon battles with some pretty beefy enemies for this point. But at this point, I got that treasure chest. There's another one farther to the left you can get, but that requires too much running, and there's another way to get it later on. So I'm just gonna go on this conveyor belt and start the series of battles. Starting off with our first winner for the part A, I'm looking at the wrong page. Proto 3, 256 HP, 33 XP, 1 TP, 60 gold, and it is weak to shadow, which if you want a good attack to use on that, use Robo's laser spin. You can also use certain dual techs, like I think uh, Marl and Luca can learn one by this point that's shadow elemental. No. No. All right, that's not until later. Right. I've always been a bit iffy on remembering when certain texts first become available, at least on the dual text side. And you know what? Now that I think about it, I know why I don't have it yet. <laughs> you need a certain thing. Something that we'll, we will be going over fairly soon. shortly. Uh, I guess if you want to, uh, using whatever kind of lightning attack Chrono has at this point, be it a slash attack or otherwise, is also really good. I prefer to bring in Marl for this area, purely because Luca's fire attack doesn't do that much to anything. The, though there is one good strategy with it later on in this part that I have. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. What could that be? Hmm, hmm, Yugi boy. Admittedly, uh, in terms of looks, this area has always been one of my least favorite. Because, well, first off, you need to keep in mind those password, uh, passwords X, A, and B, B, because we're going over to I've a always, crane right now in order, I've in always order just, to... I've always just memorized the codes, so... I, is it one of those things where you can just know the codes ahead of time and go over to it? Um, yeah. Huh. I didn't know that, but you need those passwords in order to move these two barrels so we can progress on those paths. Hmm. And if you don't do that, well... That you're, I don't think you're going to be able to progress. But anyway, as I was saying, this uh, environment set, uh, the, the factory, has always been one of my least favorites. Because if I recall, it's the most commonly used in terms of dungeon amounts. In this game? Yeah, between the domes, the under the er under the Eris Dome, uh, this lab, and a few other dungeons in this timeline or in this time period that we'll see later on. I there's think almost all use this exact one. Mm, there's that one, there's this one, and then there's under Eris Dome. And... Which, to be fair, not many areas aside from the future have a good amount of dungeons in terms of timeline. Which sucks back. because, oh my god, oh my god, I really, really wanted one specific dungeon to exist. And I'm pretty sure uh, you may know which one I may be speaking of. Maybe. I believe I do. And then you get a bolt sword, which is a lightning and mental sword. Recommend giving that to Chrono if you also, want to. One cool thing. And that's the password thing, we need. Also, one thing uh, I was you, hoping would ahead. happen, like with the with the treasure chest, is that you know how you can check an empty treasure chest? I was hoping that they'd add like they'd have a couple random treasure chests that had an extra item in it if you checked it a second time. Didn't six do that at one point? I'm, 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 yeah, I probably did knowing six. I thought what we got in that little room out there was the next password we need in this left passageway. It was Zabi, Z A B I E, but you, it translates it into uh, the code, which is X A B Y. You can also memorize that and not have to deal with uh, going through that. But that area is optional, but it has good stuff in it. Anyways, alkalines are the next enemy, the green ones. Nine HP, two hundred and fifty defense, ninety magic defense. 
45 EXP, 1 tech point, and 40 gil. They're weak to lightning attacks, so Chrono Slash would be a good idea to use. But I'm a really anally retentive about early game MP, so I prefer to use physical attacks. Dude, early game MP is like a third of max, though. Yeah, but if it's... But this game, it's always been like this for me. If my MP is below 40, I get really nervous about using it, even though early game techs use like two or three at most. <sighs> it's because I'm constantly wow, thinking are, about late game. you are extremely conservative. It, this is one of the few games where I'm like that. Trust me, whenever I get to Final Fantasy VII, my MP is going to be going all over the place. There's a lot of hidden encounters in the hallway that you can actually completely skip if you just know where to go. In fact, a good amount of speedrunning Chrono Trigger is learning how to get around environment uh, encounter points. To the point where, I'm trying to remember exactly how AGDQ did. I think it was like six hours long? Back in 2013? Ridiculously short, either way. And there we got an arm. That is an upgrade for Robo. Robo's weapons are all arms. Why didn't you but name him Rick? Because, natural names, dude. The only character I think I'll ever rename in an LP that has an actual name is probably either Gogo or Umaro in 6. Purely because they're comical enough, and they're basically useless in the storyline. The, fir the first time I played Final Fantasy VI, I named Terra after a, f a Japanese friend of mine who moved away. Her name was Miyumi. Ooh. And there's a plasma gun. If you have Luca on you, you can equip that on her. But then, I say that, but the thing is, you can actually equip people all up with things, even when they're not in the party in this game. I just entirely forgot about that at this point in the game. And there we did a thing, so now we're going, gonna come in here and do another thing so we can do more things. Though this thing triggered another thing to sound off, making things gonna chase us things. Things, things, things. All joking aside, our tampering in this area has caused an alarm to go off a bit late, if you ask me. And we need to get the hell out of Dodge! Uh oh. Okay. Oh god. Marl got squished. I always did imagine her ponytail got stuck in there. But yeah, Robo's super strong. Also, and this moment right here got funny. me a little nervous. I never understood that. Never have. It scared me a lot uh, when I first played the game as a little kid. I was like, what is he doing? I, I have no idea how to say about that. There are a lot of memorable sections in this game, though, because I always distinctly remember that Seek show. And oh, what? hey, more Robos! Blue Robos. Can you Apparently all join our party, guys. please? And we these guys all have similar model tags to Robo, so that means hey. these must be the guys from the same series. Why did you punch him? Dicks. Well, how rude. Automatons. Attack them! What are you doing? Apparently, they see Robo as malfunctioning. Because not only did he let intruders in here, but they're also humans, which for some reason, they don't like that. So, yeah. Good lord. Hey, get away from my robe, bow. Get away! Yeah, you actually can do nothing. This is one of those cutscenes that just continuously goes on so you can watch in the horror of your friend getting beaten senselessly. Stop a ouch. Dicks. I hate seeing I don't like cutscenes like this at all. Well, no one really does, probably. There are times where I could say it works for a fact in a storytelling premise. Like, uh I merely think of one in seven that I can think of is after you finish the ancient, uh, what was the name of it? The ancient temple? Oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, I know that one. I know that one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, where you run around as a little ghost cloud. I always found that place really effective. And now they're gonna try and take us Marl's down. Face right, Marl's face right there is just like... <laughs> Bitch, please. Uh, Next boss is the R series. Each one of these guys has 150 HP, 80 XP, 1 TP, and 100 G. And they're all weak to lightning. However, one thing you can do is if you had... Marl, uh, Luca instead of Marl, send flame tosses down each row and then have Chrono whirl each, uh, not Coral, whatever the spin attack is called. Cyclone. Each, cyclone each column. Therefore, you can kill it, uh, one column per turn. 
that's my general strategy. If you do it, have it. And uh, if you don't have Marl, j uh, Luca, just have Marl heal. I just grind like crazy so I can kill them in one shot. I would do that, but I, honestly, even though I used to grind for max levels in the RPGs I used to play, like, I mean, now I did that for a fact in Dragon Quest 1 and 2. Uh, I've grown out of doing that because it takes some of the fun out of the game. Plus, it also lengthens the recording process by, like, six times, depending on the game. But yeah, the R-Series, not very hard. They're generic recolors for a reason. I do believe but the frames... there's one other... There's, a, there's another R-Series, though. Yeah, we'll find out about that eventually. I do believe the f extra frames of animation these guys have as enemies are what Robo was given as an idle animation in battle in the DS version. Whoop. And there they go. Okay. Well, that was anticlimactic, but uh, we should probably get Robo out of there. Oh, no, Robo. They trashed him. I never understood what that little pit they were in right there is. Is it like a garbage compactor out of Star Wars or something? I mean, they were in there. I don't know. Yeah. The blue guys were in there. I don't really know what that could mean. Maybe it's a tunnel because they weren't there before, but they were in there after. Possibly. And now we drag him back. Also, something about the 2300 overworld is I've never confirmed this, but I've heard that you can actually get poison if you stay in it long enough. Or at least to start taking damage. That's interesting. I've never confirmed it for myself, but I've heard that as a rumor, and I, I, I don't know for a fact. And Robo's now out of friends and basically a home, so... Luca's basically asking if he wants to come with us. And us being the good Samaritans we are. Duh. We named him. Ah, oh, this theme is so good. Fits a great the, character. The, the, yeah, the, it really does fit Robo as a character. In fact, I can say for a fact, all my favorite songs in the game are character themes. Luca's theme, Robo's theme, Chrono's theme. Luca's is my favorite because... Well, let's put it like this. It was made the victory theme in the sequel for a reason. Yep. And now... Oh, God. Whoa. Um, that I, just happened. At first, I thought the game had glitched on me when I first saw that. Um, th that lightning bolt wasn't good. What? And this is what? new. Where are we? Um, this is a glitch. What's going on? Is this hell? We've hacked the game, guys. Where, where's Ben? Where are the creepypastas? That... Grandpa? Hello. Hello ah, there, boy. sir. Boy. Where are we? Apparently, this is the end of the time. All time travels lost in time end up here. And this guy basically explains this. This is the game's reasoning for having a max party of three. If four more time travel at once, uh, things go wrong. <laughs> and the end of time is basically here to be where your party members are when they're not in your party. When you select three, any uh, others stay here. And you can actually talk to them to listen to their theme anytime you want. Which is, I think, the method you were going, you were hinting at last time to hearing Lucas' theme permanently. Correct. I'm gonna have these three in my party for right now because there's something you can do here in the end of time. There's a few different things you can do. As this guy's explaining, you can head towards the top left to continue on the storyline. Not recommended to do first. You can head to that bucket here in the top right to head right to the final boss right now. Also not recommended, because Lavos will murder you. Or you can come up here. This is Specchio. He's a, he's a god of war, essentially. And uh, you look pretty strong. The way Specchio works is that he's a bit of a series of optional boss fights, but he also gives you something gameplay relevant. You see, you might have noticed last part that Robo has more than two techs at this point, but everyone else only caps off at two. That's because in order to get the third one onwards, you need the magic that Specchio gives us, and he assigns everyone an element. L uh, Chrono's el uh, element is lightning, Luca fire, Marl water. And uh, I'll tell you for this for a fact, from now on, whenever I mention weaknesses, uh, if water is a weakness, it's also the same as ice, so I'm just going to refer to it as aqua. Anyway, to get that magic, we need to circle around the room three times, counter uh, no, clockwise, and this is finicky as hell. Because I recall, I, I mean, in your LP, you were having issues with this. Mind you, you I went counterclockwise first. I went counter I went counterclockwise first. Also, I love this song. I think this is just Specchio's theme. I... yes, it is. 
It's nice I think and the wacky. Theme is, I think the theme is actually called Specchio Master of War. Yeah. It's a fact of mini mighty mo, and yeah. now everyone has magic. Fun fact, that's actually the animation for wind in this game. Yeah, uh, it, that's weird. I think uh, that actually reminds me a lot of Final Fantasy II, where technically speaking, some spells had different names. And if you actually... Actually, no, I'll, I'll save commenting on that for later in a moment. Something I you can actually do with Specchio, cool though, is fight him as an optional boss. But first, I'm going to go bring Robo in, in and do a thing with Specchio. Oh, no, I'm going to talk to this guy, old guy first. I forget what I'm doing. It's been like two months since I recorded this part. Because <laughs> I have been bad and flaking on this guy. like. And, and different schedules are still a thing. Different schedules are bad. Anyway, now let's get Robo in here and go up here. I should just be looking at my part notes that I used to record this game with, with for this. Biggest way, toy as, you've ever seen. Either way, as Specchio was saying, since he is a robot, he can't use magic. However, his laser weapons are now shadow elements, if they weren't before. Anyway, Specchio... Uh, first off, just go over this guy's stats real quick, Quen. Quen. Alright, so, actually, Specchio has different forms. Specchio... This is uh, Specchio's second weakest form. His weakest form only comes out if you have a pa party with, I believe, an average level of under 10? Leader only. Leader only, really? Okay. So, if Chrono is uh, level 9... Uh, level... Uh, nine or under, or ten or under, he uh, will encounter a smaller version of Specchio, which is weaker. But this Specchio um, is, I believe, a koala or something like that. 800, def uh, 800 hit points, 253 defense, and 50 magic defense. You don't, he doesn't drop any items, but you do get rewards for beating him. Uh, just go over this. Did you just go over the second? Yes, you did. Uh, the first form, which is levels 1 to 9, is actually a frog. Uh, 350 HP, 253 defense, 50 magic defense. Uh, the first two forms are basically just a difference in, I think, speed and damage. Because uh, they can all use the same usual elemental attacks. Form 1 uses lightning, fire, and ice. Form 2 here uses lightning, ice, fire, and water, actually. Why did you so attack him? I was just showing the fact that if you attack him, nothing happens. Ah. Also, Thunder is a re uh, like his uh, lightning attack is very pretty dangerous. lethal. That's why you want Marl and Lu that's why I actually think pro I brought in Marl and Robo for two healers. And for doing that, we get a lot of tabs. Basically, for fighting him, you get a each time you first beat a form, and this includes New Game Plus, I believe. You get a care set, which is basically the uh, mid ethers, ethers, whatever level of thing you're looking at right now, plus uh, a tab or two. Depending on the one. We'll be fighting as many forms of Specchio as I can throughout the playthrough, though there are two for a fact I'm not fighting. The first one, and the obvious final one, because there's no way I'm grinding to level 99 this time around. Also, the um, the final form is actually quite a pain in the, uh, quite a pain in the rumpus to be, to, to be Yeah, the final with. form sucks. The second to final form is also sucky. And now we're actually heading back to... 2300 AD real quick because there is a tab we can get here if we wait around in this room long enough. It appears just below the gate a little bit to the left. You know it's there when you hear the item get sound, but it I don't think the a little sparkle actually shows up. There it is. I did not know that. Power tabs as usual go to Chrono. Eventually they will start going to one of two other characters. But for right now, Chrono is my main objective. Because he's going to be in the party like 85% of the time. Why are you going back out? To test the theory of poison? No, oh, because to get, I, the, to get the Bangor... Uh, got it. Got yeah, it. I backtracked all the way back to the de gate we entered 2300 AD with because the more gates you access, the more you can go come or... Uh, go through in here. So now I have. And believe the one me, the this will be very. This dome. will actually be very beneficial. This yeah, be especially very later on when I'm doing a certain small side quest. Either way, the only one we can really head to at this point is 1000 AD Medina Village. So let's check this place out. The uh, monsters, monsters. Where, where are we? Um. Oh. You're in Medina. No, I was in a closet. It was only a matter of time before Chrono came out of the closet. <sighs> oh, I knew you were going to insert a gay joke. But good. Good job. Good job. I'm proud of you. This is actually a village of mystics, which 
are followers of, well, descendants of followers of Magus, the guy who was defeated in the war 400 years ago. These guys are okay with us right here because they don't mind us too much, but everyone else in this village basically hates humans. And here's the Elder's house. This is Ozzy the Eighth. He's a dick. That'll be a running trend in this village. I do recommend still talking to people in this village because you can get some interesting little backstory behind them. However, uh, I'm going to show it off anyway, but I will warn you, using the inn and the shop here is potentially dangerous because there are fights here. They're very easy in those two the places, inn? rather. What yeah, inn? The, uh, the inn is, I think, in the bottom right of the village. Uh, if you try to check in there, two monsters will attack you, as I show off here. You have to plead with them first. And right. then a hench and two of those guys attack them. And then you can use the inn, but it's for a ridiculous price of 200g. No thanks, I can just use the bucket in the end of time for free. Heh, <laughs> I hate this shop because... Oh my god. Uh, well, he'll show you. Yeah. And as is the running trend with areas like this in games, the items are ridiculously expensive. They're great items. Some of these, I would say, are even endgame tier. Or at least mid-endgame. Mid-endgame, mid not endgame tier. Yeah, uh, yeah endgame is much better. Mid-endgame, but they're way uh, too expensive. Actually, Do not grind. Something interesting I've, uh, I've noticed. The prices of the items change depending on when you visit the village. Sometimes they're more expensive, yeah. sometimes they're less expensive. This looks like the exact statue that was actually in the church back in the 600, and this is pretty haunting. These guys still want them to, to strike down humans. Ugh. Why don't they just try now? And Because Guardians, because Guardia's army is ridiculously powerful at this point. Admittedly, I do want to mention that this song actually used to haunt my nightmares, because it's just the right amount of eerie to not be scary, but unsettling. Oh, this looks like an interesting little triangle. Ooh, chest. <clears throat> and Illuminati. Another. Well, we can't do anything with this thing for a good amount of time, but just keep in mind the forest ruins there for later. I wish you could have explored the forest before it was in ruins. Eh, I don't really mind. There's a lot of things in there's a lot of things in this game that I feel like could have been expanded upon? Yes. There, I feel like this game could have been expanded upon in a lot of ways, but it's still a great game nonetheless, and there could have been a lot, like, there's one specific character in this game that I feel like just doesn't have um, like, a good background, and there is, but there was so much potential during the development to create a story for the character, but they just skipped it entirely. I think I know exactly who you mean. And, and I, I agree. And I and the music creator were heartbroken because that was probably one of the greatest songs um, probably in all of Super Nintendo. Either way, uh, we completely skipped over. We went back to Melchior's there. Melchior lives around Medina. He's basically just another weapon shop, so you can actually get some good leveled weapons at this point. Uh, just uh -oh. do what I did and equip them. And now we're in the Hecron Cave, which is not a recommended area as Medina Village sold. However, we're gonna charge right in here anyway and fight some enemies, including a Gin Bottle, 97 HP, 253 defense, 34 XP, 2 TP, 50 gold. Use magic against it, because it's the best way to go about it. Next is the Octobug, 80 HP, to oh, are these are the things, right? Yeah, Octo Blush. I, I misspelled it in the thing. Yeah, because I was about to say, there's like one thing in there that I'm missing. So, 80 HP, 200 defense, 30 magic defense, uh, 20 XP, 1 tech point, 35 gold. You'll notice that I probably all of the enemies, I think all of the enemies in here, have a lot of defense and little magic defense. That's the whole gimmick with this cave, magic. It's basically telling you, hey, magic is good, use it. It's very similar to, uh, what game am I thinking of? I think it was Final Fantasy VI? Yeah, Six. Uh, Six. Vector. Where all the enemies uh, had very high defense, but were pathetically weak to magic. Uh, Just use magic, you, it's your best way through things. You might be thinking about the, uh, the Magic factory. Yes, magic, the magic, uh, magic, magic factory. factory. Sorry, that, it's in Vector, I always get that confused. Well, makes sense. Vector is weird. Mind you, actually, if you do fight things in Vector itself, they're still pretty weak to magic. Except like, for like the, guardian. the guards. Yeah, the Guardian's just immortal. <laughs> Uh, you actually, if you want to progress on, you want to head to the west, but I want to head to the south here, I believe, to get a chest. Roly polies, holy cow! 
That was a reference. Um, okay. 50 HP, 230 defense, 31 XP, 1 tech point, 50 gil. They can drop mid tonics, uh, for two, uh, and mid tonics give you 200 HP restored. Not very hard enemies. Although I just realized I completely skipped over the previous enemy fight. Those were Temporites. 88 HP, 255 defense, 32 XP, 2 TP, 45 gold. My bad. Ha. I didn't mess up. Ha. Eh, everyone messes up. I'm not perfect. Never admitted I was. The only perfect being in this game is Robo. Oh, God! Yeah, that had to hurt on the spine. Ah. That, well, that could have been a massage. You never know. Yeah, but we don't know what the roly-polies feel like. They're either slime smooth, but like they look, or they could just be covered in tiny little barbs. Ooh. Actually, well, uh, that, I mean, that assuming from what a roly-poly is in real life, I would assume it's like an arm, like a mini armadillo. Yeah, uh, I was about to go into a topic, but I'll go over these enemies first. Cave bats, 100 HP, 255 defense, 28 XP, 1 CP, 40 gold. And as they're trying to do here, they can either put you to sleep, or their normal attacks will suck away your HP. Very easy enemies. Either way, as I was about to go into a topic, uh, do you remember Chrono Break, that rumor that was around in, like, 2009-ish? Yes. Uh, I would have really liked to see that happen. For those who don't know, there was a rumor that Square was going to do a 3D remake of this game. Obviously, that that has not come to pass, but I would have really liked to see what they could have done with this game in 3D. Especially uh, a few specific fights off the top of my head. I think I have a feeling I know which ones you're talking about. Yeah, you probably do, because they're probably the most memorable boss fights. Though, actually, speaking of uh, dates and such in 2009... Uh, a few days ago was actually the 16th anniversary of Chrono Cross's release. 16th anniversary. Good God. Ah, uh, 2000 was such a good year for PlayStation RPGs. Which reminds me, I need to get to doing that video I was going to do on RPGs. Huh. Mind you, it's probably already up by the time this gets uploaded, but how do I know the future? You don't. It one thing I actually really like about some of the areas in this game, like this one, is that there's not much music to some of them. Sometimes it's just completely ambient, silent, natural noises, like uh, the waterfalls going on here, and that really does help build atmosphere. One thing I like to do, because one thing I like, uh, blah, blah, blah. I really like to go into the shop and just get those overpowered items. I usually go and find mid ethers and sell them. Sell them. I would do that, but uh, mid-ethers mid are really good. I, I want to say they do like 30 MP, and that's basically all you need for MP use uh, restoration until end game. So they're at, they're my early game too good to use club. But 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 full and hyper. Early game, uh, towards probably part 10, I'll be using them no problem. Either way, I'm bringing in Luca because the upcoming boss fight is kind of she's kind of needed. They actually warn this. They actually warn us about this guy back in the village. This is the namesake of the cave, Hecron. Oh yeah, I forgot you don't need it. Right. So this is Hecron. <laughs> this is Hecron. 2100, 2100 HP, 253 defense. Uh, doesn't I'm not giving a magic uh, magic defense stat in any way here right now. Uh, that's because magic defense. Remember, if I, if I don't put in a defense or magic defense uh, stat, that's because it's 127 or 70. 250 experience points, 10 tech points, and fifth, uh, 1,500 gold. One thing, well, go over your strategy, and then we'll go from there. As his defense stat would suggest, magic is the only way you can really do decent damage against him. Um, I have two main strategies, either the Marl Luca Robo strategy, which is Chrono and Marl just going all out with magic and Robo on the side for healing, or bringing in Luca like this for just going all out. However, do not attack him when he's in a different pose. If he looks like he's like crouched over, if you do attack him then, he does a pretty nasty counterattack. And that's about it. Um, for me, I like to use, um... A dual tech from Ro uh, Luca and Marl because I have magic tabs up for them, so it does a lot of damage. And then Chrono on standby for either a lightning or a heal. I think I know the dual tech you're talking about. I think the, I think they actually might learn at the end of this battle. Uh, um, I, uh, one thing about dual techs, though, I forget if I mentioned this back when I slightly, uh, probably poorly at that, explained the tech system like in part one or two. 
Uh, in order to get a dual tech, you need the two techs that it's comprised of in terms of ideas from both characters in order to learn it. So like uh, Fla uh, Fire Whirl with uh, Chrono and Luca, if they didn't have Flame Toss and Cyclone, they would not be able to use it. Well, actually, they need to have the abilities, but they need to fight at least one battle with those. Yeah, they abilities also need here. to fight again. They also need to have fought in a battle together with those abilities in their arsenal. Which, admittedly, one of the more interesting ideas in terms of pathing this game is figuring out who you want when in order to get what dual techs and even possibly triple techs later on. But with me, I generally just tend to be relaxed, bringing the characters I need because I generally get everyone's tech by grinding uh, towards end game. Also, Hecarion's a beefer. He has way too much HP for this point in the game. Yeah, he, he has, what, 2,100? Yeah, mind you- oh, this is the crouching position, by the way. Do not attack him during this. Just let the time go by. This is otherwise... your time to heal and yeah. redeem yourself for your mistakes. Admittedly, I guess the idea behind him having so much HP is for you to realize that, oh, maybe I shouldn't be using physical attacks against certain enemies and just try to use magic attacks instead. Mind you, if you've gone through this entire cave just doing that, how good are your stats? Because seriously, taking down a... 255 defense creature with a physical attack is kind of difficult even towards end game. Um, I think it's impossible. Uh, I, I don't recall because I forget exactly how defense and attack are uh, calculate damage together. I wouldn't be surprised if it's something like attack, defend, no, uh, attack minus defense, uh, plus or times something. Some damage formulas in the game like this are kind of out there, and honestly, a lot of them aren't just worth, worth memorizing. One thing I've noticed about quite a few RPGs, especially in Final Fantasy IX, uh, since that's the most recent RPG that I've played, I've noticed that, like, whenever I use... I'm going to use one of the characters from Final Fantasy IX as an example, since this is the most recent one that I've used, and it's what I remember. So, I have Freya with a certain killer ability, the man-eater ability, and I attack um, an enemy soldier. And she does about 720 damage, and that number come that number comes up over and over again. It's usually like in a range of stuff. She won't just do 722 or 724, or 23, 21. It's always a certain interval of like div divisible by two or four. Yeah. I've always found that rather interesting, and that's probably part of the damage formula. Yeah. Either way, Hecaran's dead, and we got Antipode for beating him because we got uh, Marl and Luka together. That's a Shadow Elemental Dual Tech, the one that Kenny was actually hinting at. And now we're actually back home through some weird whirlpoolness that was only mentioned once. And back, if you actually head to Luka's house at this point, talk to her father, we get the Tabon Vest, which is one of the best pieces of, in, of equipment in the game for her. That's going to be on her for a long time. But with that, we're going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part six... We'll be checking out how our hometown's doing after all this time being gone from it. See you guys. See you guys. Then. Okay, got me.